And now, Secrets of the Winners, starring Richard Simmons. their stories and secrets and successes because sharing is how we learn isn't it we can laugh and cry and learn how to find the joy in life so so please listen to these wonderful people now my wonderful friends hear their secrets about losing weight about exercising even when they didn't feel like it and remember if you're feeling down you're not alone don't ever think that you're here with you, Jess. I've been overweight all of my life, and it has been, being overweight to me has included tremendous suffering, mainly because the problem for me became so extreme, because at my highest weight, I was 395 pounds. And every day now, I have to remember the suffering. I have to remember the pain, the physical pain, the joint pain, how hard it is to get out of bed, how... Um, depressed I was, um, the anxiety that I would have. If I knew I was going out in public, will I fit in a booth in the restaurant? Will I be able to sit in the chair at the theater? It seemed like any activity meant anxiety and pain and suffering for me. So it came to a point for me where I had to start making choices. And I decided that I needed to uh, choose to suffer because I was actually choosing to suffer. I really believe that I was consciously choosing that. Or did I want to choose to be happy and joyful and, and healthy and happy? And I did a lot of therapy for a long time and I found a doctor that, that worked with me on the depression, took antidepressants, which gave me the strength and the courage to actually tackle the weight. So the weight, my weight is actually my, I call it my last big hurdle in my life is overcoming my weight. So my journey began in March, March 27th, 1998. I weighed 395.1 pounds, and today is October 6th, 1998, and today I weigh 319 pounds, which is 75 pounds gone from my body, but which is probably 500 pounds gone from my head. <laughs> and I'm very, very, very grateful for that. And still for me, every day, it's about choices. When I see food that I want to eat, I think to myself consciously, it's a conscious thing, I have to remind myself to think about it. Do I want to eat this and enjoy it for this moment, or do I want to get on the scale on Thursday and see another pound gone? When I'm walking around the block and I want to stop and not go any further, I think to myself consciously, do I want to keep going and push myself a little bit and, and see the results on the scale, or do I want to go ahead and, and go home and rest? And, um, and it's, it's all about conscious choices for me. Well, this morning I had to make a choice. This morning when the alarm clock went off and I was cozy and warm in bed and I was comfy and I didn't want to get up and I didn't want to wake up and my joints hurt and my knees were sore, I had to choose, did I want to lay there and suffer some more, suffering again? Did I want to choose suffering or did I want to go ahead and roll out of bed and pop Richard's stretching tape into the VCR and stretch and know that after I stretched I, I'd feel better, my knees would feel better and I could, I could run into my day and so I chose to hop out of bed mentally, <laughs> maybe not physically, but um, I did get out of bed and I popped that tape in the VCR and I did my stretching with Richard and, and it starts my whole day in a different, with a different attitude, my body feels better, I'm, I'm more able to function physically and mentally. That's Susie's secret. She learned to make choices, and she's right. We all have choices in everything we do, so please make the right choice for yourself. And now, let's listen to more secrets. My first diet was when I was nine. My doctor put me on a 900 calorie diet 
at nine years of age, and needless to say, I lasted probably about 45 minutes on the diet. I've been obese since I was a kid, so I have learned the in and outs of stealing, begging, lying, cheating for food down the line. It was just something that I grew up with. If, um, if there was ever a compulsive personality, an overeating compulsive personality for food, it would definitely have my name after the definition. I've tried everything. I have done um, all protein. I have done all shakes. I have skipped meals. I have been bulimic. I have not eaten, although I have to say that the not eating doesn't last for very long because I would just rather have the food. I have paid up front and gotten packaged diets. I have um, had shots. I have used um, stimulants, diet pills, that um, in hopes that um, that would keep my my hunger, my cravings um, away. But it might have momentary success in the sense that I might lose 10, 15, 20, sometimes even 50 pounds. But the minute that you stop, it's back on. I never learned how to eat. I never learned why I ate. I never learned that sometimes I would eat if I was stressed. I would eat for a lot of other reasons than just being hungry. And um, once I started figuring that out, once I used a program like Richard's where I was in control, I made the decision of what I wanted to eat and when I needed to eat it. That somehow gave me the ability to start looking at why I was eating. Maybe it's a combination that I was finally ready to do it and that having that little sense of control finally allowed me the opportunity to really focus on it. I don't know exactly why, but it was it was the right time finally. And I was finally able to look at the fact that um, I do a lot of eating when I'm really not hungry. And I noticed that when I keep a food diary or when I keep a list or something, I have a general idea of when I'm eating and why I'm eating and how much I'm eating. If I go back and look at it, it's like, oh, you know, you were feeling this way that day. Or, you know, you had a really stressful moment with your boss and the next thing you know, you're going out and you're eating something. Hmm. You know, and, and, and learning those has been a real eye opener for me. You just heard what Jeanette said. Until she started keeping a food diary, she didn't know how much she was eating. So there's another secret. Are you going to use it? Yes. I hope so. And I started listening to Richard. He's such a wonderful motivator, you know, and he's funny, and I love listening to him, you know. <clears throat> and from that, from that moment, I started saying to myself, well, okay, this is something that could be possible for me. You know, so and I worked out that day. I never done aerobics in my life. <laughs> I did ten minutes of aerobics, and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I sat down on the chair in the back here, and I was huffing and puffing, and I was I was at that point just about 180 pounds, and for me that was that was significant. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, what really turned it around and made me come here was, um, I'll never forget it, I was in the shower one day, dropped the soap, turned around, and I had got the worst spasm in my back. I never had that ever before in my, in my life. And I said, oh, this is it. You know, something's got to be done about this. You can't go on because you're not going to be able to bend over soon. You're not going to be able to do a lot of things. And that's not the kind of person that I am. So here I was, huffing and puffing <laughs> in class. And saying, well, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> but, you know, I, I looked around, um, and I came back the next week. It was on the weekend. I came back, and I saw all these other women that were much heavier than I, that can move better than I. And that sort of blew me away. So I started, kept coming back, and kept coming back. Well, as time went on, you know, I started losing some weight. And, and then all of a sudden, I turned around, and there was like, you know, 30 pounds is gone. I go, well, where did that go to? And how did that happen? You know, it's through the aerobics. And then I started the toning, which I love toning because that's, I love that more than anything, weight training, because I was used to doing that. 
and um, and that's changed quite so much. I've changed my my whole body shape, everything because of that, held together with the aerobics. And we all know that's what you got to do. And after a while, I guess just this summer, it started bothering me, saying, you know, enough of this. Okay, you've been happy this way. Just get rid of the last 20 and just be done with it. And then we can start to maintain, not have to worry about it. So, and, and I had to start doing some changes because I was still, I was eating okay. But then I finally found out thinking about it, listening to what Rich is saying about the food and about different calories, and I started changing a lot of things. I started cutting down the carbohydrates a lot because I eat too much. I used to eat in the morning. I finally figured out almost four or 500 calories just for breakfast. Big bowl of cereal, fruit, you know, juice, toast, the whole thing. And I figured, well, get a good start in the morning, you know, and you'll be set. Well, that wasn't working, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> so I cut that down. I eat, everything is portioned now. I started this back in August. I started this almost three months ago. And um, portion control, which Richard advocates. And, and he's right on. I mean, that's the key. You have to watch what you eat, the amount of portions. It's not what you eat, it's how much of it. So I now eat maybe every three hours something. I have a little bit of cereal. I mean, like a cup <laughs> in the morning. and Or whatever else I'm eating. Very por It's portioned. Um, I don't really measure, but I know. I mean, you know how much a cup is. It's not that much. <laughs> and I eat fruit in the morning, you know, before lunch. And I have a little lunch, maybe a little sandwich or, you know, something else. Or and some vegetable in the afternoon or vice versa with the fruit or the vegetable. You know, you work your way around it. And you just have little things, you know, a little thing of yogurt or something. And and I don't eat after Top. 8 o'clock if I can help it. That's the key is at night because the food just sits. It doesn't go anywhere, but sits right in your stomach. And it's worked. I've lost 12, another 12 pounds since August. Now I can wear a size 8, sometimes a 6. Never in my life have I seen that number. But, you know, I try thinking it's only a number. A size eight, a size six. Sherry, I love you. Sherry, she's so intelligent. Instead of pouring the cereal into a big bowl every morning, Sherry's secret, well, she learned portions. We all know that's a very important secret. Is it yours? It's Sherry's. Try it. It's in every dieter's um, story where you lose the weight because you're on the diet. You go off the diet and gain it back. If not, the amount you've gained, most likely more. And that was my, my story. And so I decided mm. that, you know, I've got to find some way that's going to keep me on an even keel. And I found a few things that really do help me. Um, I make sure that I don't let that um, weight gain get out of hand. If I put on five, ten pounds, as it will happen around the holidays, then I'm going to take it back off. I am not going to let it get any higher. I am, you can't. You have to nip it in the butt because it's going to creep back up. And you have to take a look at your eating habits and say, you know what, I'm really eating stuff that I, you know, enjoy as a treat, but now it's becoming a regular habit again and i got to cut it out. You have to take a look at those things. I make sure that, um, for me, uh, that I eat smaller meals. If I eat six smaller meals instead of three big meals in the snack, my metabolism is going to be on an even keel. I'm not going to feel the need to snack. And then once you get to know what um, actual hunger feels like, physical hunger, then you realize that because you satisfy that physical hunger, you don't need to satisfy the emotional hunger. You can look for other things that are going to help um, get your mind back to where it needs to if you're feeling that, oh, you know, I had a bad day. I'm going to have a, you know, a bowl of ice cream and a piece of cake and five cookies and, well, you know what? I already did that. Let me finish off the ice cream, you know, before it gets to that state. So that really helps me to have those smaller meals. 
another thing is consistency. You have to be consistent. If you're not consistent with your exercise, uh, you know, it's going to uh, either keep your weight gain where it is, or you're, you know, you're going to see it go up a little bit. You need that physical activity. It needs to be constant. You have to do it. You have to eat right too. It doesn't mean you can't have your cookie or your piece of cake occasionally, but it means that you do have to be consistent and watch your portions. You have to realize that it's important for you to listen to that that body of yours. Are you eating now because you're in a social situation? You satisfied that physical hunger, but everybody else is still eating, so why can't you? And that's the thing. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I'm very careful to watch out for those two things, you know, with eating eating properly, exercising, and, you know, being consistent with both of those, I make sure that when those negative tapes start playing in my head about you put on three pounds, you are a pig, you're nasty, you're this, look at that, your stomach's hanging out. When you start getting that stuff going on, you, you have to stop and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, look where I've come from. Look where I have been. I have done so much, and to talk to yourself in that way is not going to do you any good. What's going on? And so you look at what the problem may have been that caused you to gain that weight, and that, you know what, get it off again, and start telling yourself the positive things. I look at the positive things going on in my life, and that definitely overpowers all those negative things. It really does. Thank you, Judy, for telling us how you did it. What a simple secret. Simple, just two words. Keep positive and don't stop loving yourself either. Listen. Oh, I don't know. I imagine there's all kinds of baloney ways to tell you that there's motivation, but the true motivation is just you have to love yourself and you have to get into yeah, yourself. And quit worrying about what your spouse says or your friend says. Or, you know, every time I went to the grocery store with my wife, and I love to go grocery shopping, mm -hmm. uh, a little kid would say, Mommy, look at that fat man. And some women would say to their kid, Yeah, you're right, isn't that terrible? You know, he has no control. Some people would slap their kid. I'd walk up to that woman and say, You know, the kid's not lying. I am fat. He might have a different way of saying it. But I'm fat. That's the truth of the matter is, you're fat. You're a size 82 pair of pants. You're a size 82. Go buy a size 82 and put on a pair that fits you so you're comfortable. Don't try to get into a 78 because that 78 is going to make you so miserable you're not going to be able to stand it. Make yourself comfortable mentally and physically and accept who you are. You're fat, you're fat. There's no, you're not, it doesn't make you a bad person. But you know, the truth of the matter is, you're who you are. And if you're a good person and you try to do nice things for people, that's all that matters. Like I said, go for those walks. Walks are kind of nice. They're not easy. First time I went for a walk, I went from out in front of my house to the neighbor's house and back. I was exhausted. But you know, I did it every day, a little at a time. I went for my walks. I, you know, and my walks were from my bed to the bathroom. I mean, that was a big walk. You know, it doesn't matter how far or what the distance is. The, what matters is that you keep trying. And you know what? When you fail, big. Deal. Life still goes on. It doesn't matter if you fail. Because you know what? You've never failed if you tried. As long as you keep trying, there is no failure. It's when you sit down and give up is when you fail. And you know, you don't have to do the hour aerobics at first. You can do the charity video. But you have to love yourself. And you have to be number one. And just be a good person, period. And just just do it. And don't put time limits on it. Don't put amounts on it. Don't don't do any of that stuff because it doesn't matter. As long as if you lose one pound a month, that's better than gaining one pound a month. You know, I was so hung up on 640. So if I lose 100, I'm 540. It's going to take me 10 years to lose 100. So forget it. And like I said, if it's just moving your fingers, move them. It doesn't matter because after you move one finger, then the next finger, then it's going to be your hands, and then it's going to be your elbows, and it's going to be like a little kid game. And it's very simple. It's simpler than you could ever imagine. It's not hard once you understand that you're in control and nobody else is. 
but you know, you gotta laugh inside too. Sometimes you gotta laugh at yourself. You know, I still stand in the mirror and look at it and I tell my wife, I don't, it's so weird to me that I don't look any smaller to myself. And I'm 36 inches around the waist smaller than I was. But when I look in the mirror, I still see that same person that was 640 pounds. And I don't quite understand it. You know, I wish I would have put some masking tape on the mirror so I could see the difference. But, you know, it must be true because I know my pants are a lot smaller. And people ask me if I got new glasses. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so you're not always going to notice it. You're, it's just going to be something you feel. And like I said, it's just, it's all you. It's nobody else's fault. It's not your mother's fault, you know. You, it's mm -hmm. not, you know, the way you were raised. You're an adult. You have control of your life. And you don't have the right to let anybody else control it. You are in control. And if somebody says something to you that's negative and you don't like it, instead of getting angry and going to eat a piece of cake, say, you know what, Bill? That's not right. And you know what? Just, that's what I consider taking control. Oh, we've reached the end of this side of the tape, but there's more for you to hear on the other side. So please push the fast forward button to the end and turn the tape over now. We'll be coming back at our next, on the next part. So stay tuned for that. Thank you.